and I'm going to give a big welcome to everybody for thank you for joining us here tonight to learn about snow crystal microphotography. Um, and we're so happy to have Kathy Holechka here, who is going to be sharing her knowledge and expertise about the subject with us this evening. But now I will turn it over to Kathy. Screen share. Um, so, hi everybody, can you hear me okay, Brownlin? Yep, we can all hear you. Oh, You're now great. Thank you. Thank you. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank Brownlin for inviting me. I support the Natural History Society of Maryland. Um, I think this is a unique opportunity for those of us who live in Maryland and Virginia that, yes, in fact, we do get some snowfalls. And five years ago, I decided my love for um, winter and snow. Um, I grew up in Wisconsin. And um, as a little girl, we loved playing in the snow, ice skating, eating snow, making snow forts. We had tons of snow. And so I think living in Virginia when it snows, it just makes me, it takes me back to my childhood days being raised in Wisconsin. So. The title of my program is Snow Crystal Photomicrography 101, because if I can do it, you too can do it. So a little bit about me. My name is Kathy Horechka. I'm a retired US Airways um, slash American flight attendant since 2010. Um, I actually started flying in 1984. Um, and at present, I volunteer in the Smithsonian in the Geology, Gems, and Mineral Gallery since 2014. That kind of coincided with our youngest son being in high school. I no longer needed to volunteer in school. Um, high school, they don't want to see moms in school. So I, I found my, my niche volunteering in the Smithsonian. And um, I'm also editor. Again, once I stopped flying, I needed something to do, something to challenge me. So I asked to be editor of the Mineral Mite. This is our club, Micromineralogist of the National Capital Area. And here's our website, which I'll publish at the end of the program, probably in the chat. But um, here's a little uh, club business card, just kind of advertising our club when we meet Long Branch Nature Center in Arlington. Of course, everything is now Zoom. Our meetings every fourth Wednesday are on Zoom. And again, here's our club website. So guess what? Here I am at the Smithsonian. I'm dressed in my volunteer uh, vest with a little replica of the Hope Diamond that my husband bought me one time. And I got to meet Dr. Richard Curran. He is the author of a book called The Hope Diamond. And I'm like, wait, he's not a scientist. He's not a mineral person. Why would he be writing the book of the Hope Diamond? And he told, well, he's an anthropologist. He wrote about the people who wore and owned the Hope Diamond through history. And of course, um, we all consider the Hope Diamond, you know, um, suspicious or, you know, um, jinxed, you know. No, he wrote about the people, it's just a myth. There's nothing suspicious about anyone who owned the Hope Diamond. And I'm actually handling the package, a, a replica of the package in which it was delivered from New York City to Washington DC, rather nondescript. So I'm a micromounter. That means I collect minerals and I observe them under the microscope, which means I collect minerals that require magnification. Therefore, there's my microscope. So I have a really nice collection of uh, crystal diamonds, not faceted, but natural. And I also have a really nice collection of smithsonite, smithsonite from all over the world. Here I am in the museum volunteering, periodic table of, of a cell phone. Here we're teaching um, that there are approximately 35 native elements in the periodic table elements that need to be mined that go into the technology. Okay, so here I am on my airplane flying into Wisconsin. Here I am flying home. Okay, next slide. So I first was, I first was invited to present 
um, at the Rochester Mineralogical Symposium, April 12, 2019. I was invited to present like in a student uh, short program. And um, so this was the, the write-up that I submitted. I used my Olympus microscope with a little uh, Canon shirt, power shot camera. I also use my cell phone and I discovered that every snowfall has its own signature crystals based on temperature and humidity. This is something I learned myself. And then I'll go into uh, further about the crystal form of a snowflake. Um, snow crystals are classified in a very variety of forms, including stellar dendrites, columns, capped columns, plates, stellar plates, needles, rhyme, and grapple. So I never imagined that snow crystals would be so scientific, but you'll see some of it that I've captured. All right, so here I am, Alexandria, Virginia. Uh, this picture, the snow stopped, but this is really critical. First of all, Alexandria, Virginia, we have a range of annual snowfall, you know, from zero to 15 inches. We very rarely get snow. So um, I, I do my best uh, to prepare, you know, the day before or whatever um, to get my microscope and things that I need ready to go outside. Okay, so I have an Olympus microscope. It's a binocular. And in this case, I'm holding my little power shot camera up to the left eyepiece, okay? Um, what I designed are these little plastic Ziploc sandwich bag, five inches square. I inserted a cardboard for stability and I chose purple felt or kind of a bluish color felt. Why felt? Um, because felt has an aeration to it that when the snow lands, it doesn't like stick to my, my um, stage. It, it just kind of floats and then I can work my microscope and view, you know, um, get closer to the specimen. I have a ring that zooms in seven power to 40 power magnification here. So I'm turning the knob to bring my lens closer to the subject. I turn the ring to magnify seven to 40 power. And then I hold the camera and I also kind of adjust the camera, but then the camera automatically tries to adjust and see what it is I'm aiming for. Okay, so at my house here, here's this table. Here's my microscope setup, okay? So I basically have the table where it's just leaning out the edge of the, um, over the, under the roof where the snow is falling. And then of course my electricity is plugged in through the front door. So I make myself really comfortable and I know I'm gonna be out there as long as the snow falls. So here I am, Olympus microscope, a little simple Canon power shot, you know, it's, it's digital. Uh, my blue felt five inch by five inch. Here's a black one because I also started trying with black, different colors, light blue. I, I decided light blue didn't work because I couldn't get the contrast. And I really didn't like black because I like a little bit of color. And you'll see what I mean when I show you my, my snow crystals. Okay, so my microscope has to have a light power, right? It cannot be hot or it's gonna melt my source, right? So it has to be a cool, it's an incandescent light ring. So it's not giving off any heat so my snowflakes do not melt. And then I have my Samsung 7 cell phone. So I simply hold the camera to the microscope left eyepiece. So a little bit of education Snow crystal growth and the no to alike conjecture. Okay, so did you ever wonder how a snowflake starts forming? I mean, is it water? Is it what? It's the nucleation around a dust particle. You have to have something for the snow crystals to start growing, okay? So the first step, it will grow into hexagonal prism since smooth facets grow most slowly. Then you'll have simple plates, little hexagonal plate, unstable as crystals grow larger, and then the corners start sprouting arms. And again, you notice this crystal hexagonal 
um, order. So now the crystals move to different temperatures. This is high altitude. Plates first grow and then arms grow. And then crystals move through many different temperatures because they're floating around in the clouds, right? Create, uh, create at high altitude, low humidity. Um, because the, the everything is um, um, designed at high altitude. So crystals move through many different temperatures. Each change causes new growth behavior on the arms, okay? So the complex history gives you a complex crystal shape. Each arm experienced same history. So that's the symmetry. No two paths similar. Therefore, no two snowflakes alike, okay? So the structure of crystalline ice, this is important. The water molecules in an ice crystal form a hexagonal lattice. So each red ball represents an oxygen atom, while the gray sticks represent hydrogen atoms. There are two hydrogens for each oxygen. So the chemical formula is H2O water, right? But in frozen state, it's considered a mineral. So the six-fold symmetry of snow crystals ultimately derives from the six-fold symmetry of the ice crystal lattice. And I give credit to Dr. Ken Lebrecht. If you Google snowcrystal.com, you'll get all his information. All his stuff is lab grown, but um, I really appreciate his research, okay? So Dr. Kenneth Lebrick is a professor of physics and department chairman of the California Institute of Technology. He received his bachelor's in physics at Caltech 1980. He was originally trained as a solar astronomer at Princeton University and received his PhD in 1984. Well, guess what? In 1984, I became, became a flight attendant for US Airways. So the thing that Ken and I also have in common, we're the same age, but we won't, we won't um, expose that. So what's important in this little graph of his that I really appreciate, you know, we, we mostly notice the little fern-like stellar dendrites. You know, we think of this as a snowflake, stellar dendrites, okay? Um, here's some kind of sectored plates. Again, you've got that little hexagonal plate that starts growing branches, or it doesn't at all. It can actually land in my microscope in this form too. Um, uh, single prisms, columns. I don't recognize this sort of thing, but certainly, and you may be familiar with, simple needles, needle clusters or crossed needles, basically needles just kind of attaching to each other. And I don't really recognize cups or sheaths. I do recognize capped columns. And boy, when they came into my microscope view, I was so happy. Okay, so then hollow plates. In the mineral world, we might consider them kind of hopper because they're three-dimensional. And again, scrolls on plates. I don't recognize this sort of stuff. Um, I mean, I haven't seen it yet, okay? But here's your radiating dendrite. Irregulars, uh, rhymed, and grapple, okay? This is important because um, this is how snowflakes are formed, different um, temperatures and altitude. All right, so this is, this is critical. You've got your temperature in Fahrenheit. This is where they're formed at 32 degrees, zero degrees, um, low humidity, higher humidity. This is way high altitude where they're formed. Not, they don't change like, you know, when they're in our atmosphere. This is the construction of the snow crystal morphology diagram. Okay, so initially, high altitude, low humidity, um, freezing temperature and below. You first start with plates and some hollow prisms, okay? But notice your plates, right? Remember that speck of dust? It grew a plate first, and then it travels through a little humidity. We're going higher humidity. And, you know, it's coming more into our atmosphere, um, especially in Virginia. We've always had humidity, even in the winter. I really never had crisp, you know, uh, freezing temperatures like you have in Minneapolis or Denver, you know, so you, we always have high humidity. But I'm really happy to report that I've got columns, plates, dendrites, needles, um, and of course the dendrites. Again, as it floats down through the atmosphere, it keeps picking up branches and branches 
beautiful symmetry, always hexagonal. So I have to mention this, rhyme snowflakes and grapple. Snow crystals grow inside clouds made of water droplets. Often a snow crystal will collide with some water droplets, which freeze onto the ice. These droplets are called rhyme, and you will see this in my photography, okay? And um, so a snow crystal might have no rhyme, few rhyme droplets, quite a few. Sometimes the crystals are completely covered in rhyme. Blobs of rhyme are called grapple. And when I see grapple, I don't like it, but it, it's, it's a, an effect in nature. And little rhyme is gonna look like this, okay? Little, little balls of ice. Okay, so my, so basically, I was looking at my notes today. I basically photographed seven different snowfalls. I started in March of 2015, snowstorm Thor. Um, I did not measure really temperature or humidity. I just was excited to get anything at all. But again, here's my microscope. Here's that little stage of felt um, filling up with snow snow crystals and my light source. I dial this ring seven degree, seven times power to 40 times power. And then I turn the knob for my lens to come down or lift up based on what view I want. And of course, I, I, I view through my microscope and kind of adjust what I want. And remember, it's always freezing. So I'm cold. My hands are cold. I try to wear gloves, but Sometimes gloves are not effective. Okay, so here you have like a little hexagonal plate with just a thin, right? Remember I said all those little balls of ice rhyme, they develop to be grapple, but you can clearly see the hexagonal shape. And this is what kind of um, makes it enjoyable. Um, I actually love seeing these snow crystals, stellar plates, lovely hexagonal, it grows a bigger plate and then it starts growing some arms, but the arms are complete plates, okay? Now, guess what? My camera battery expired. My first snowstorm that I wanted to capture, my battery expired. So I lost time charging the battery on my, on my um, camera. So that was something I overlooked. So my husband bought me two more batteries. So now I work with three batteries and keep rotating, okay. So here we have rhymed needles. Again, this is snowstorm Thor. Uh, rhymed needles, just needles. I mean, this is what's coming to my microscope. And this would be a black, black felt background. I'm talking about how I don't like black. I prefer to have a little color. There's my purple, purplish blue. But I will say microscope was set at 20 power. Uh, here's a nice plate. Um, and what I want to say is each snowfall pretty much is the same. You don't get a whole diverse variety of snowflakes. Um, these were gorgeous. Look at this capped column, a hexagonal plate attached to a hollow hexagonal like tube. And then we get these um, hexagonal, I call them hopper crystal because they're very three dimensional. Check this one out. Look at the little extensions. It's starting to grow little arms, okay? But it stopped, okay? And um, of course, um, you know, you may see things blurred. Of course, we're looking through a microscope, three-dimensional. It's very hard to focus, um, you know, one-dimensional when you're enjoying three-dimensional on the microscope. So my second attempt was February, 2016. And again, I take a lot of photographs but I only collect a certain few to share because it's hard, it's really hard, it's hard through the microscope managing everything, trying to get what I want. Okay, so look at this lovely dendrite here um, or hexagonal plate. What I'm enamored, uh, oh, this is, okay, this is this snowflake, hexagonal. I like to go on the inside and really look at what's going on inside um, the snow crystal and, you know, see the little dots in the middle, but then hexagonal, there's complete order. And of course, these plates are attaching, rhyme attaching to the plates, okay? So it just, you know, floated around in the cloud, picked up more and more. 
versus um, something that be, might be more clear and delicate, okay? So, um, all right, we'll move on. So, okay, Olympia, 2016. We're at 34 degrees temperature. Okay, now I'm starting to pay attention to temperature and then my uh, microscope magnification. In Virginia, I've never been able to be outside photographing snowflakes um, less than 32 degrees. It just doesn't happen. So I, I get what I get. Um, this particular lovely dendritic form, a little bit broken there, but it's just really fun. Now I experimented with a different background. This is actually a plastic blue lid like from the kitchen. And um, you know, it's just kind of interesting art. I actually didn't like the plastic because I see all the scratches and um, it was hard to reuse because a snowflake would stick to it and whatever. That's why I like working with felt because I could just tap all my snowfall off and then I can just continue to um, add, uh, collect more snow crystals. Check this out, lovely hexagonal. Wouldn't you say that that's a lot of rhyme? Um, look at this, this one's basically grapple. You know, so much rhyme, it just turned into grapple. Again, that, that snowflake here, you know, had to have gone through a lot of atmosphere and clouds up and down around, and then finally come to my scope. Versus like this clear little beautiful, um, very thin plate, so thin that you can see my, my felt fibers through it, okay? Um, and again, one of the things I like to do I have a touch screen, so look at how I'm, I, I love looking at the very center, little iridescent coloring, but just a lovely um, hexagonal center in the snowflake. Um, okay, again, 34 degrees, it's really hard to get um, perfect crystals. Um, so nice dendritic forms. And the branches will all be symmetrical too. It's all symmetry in nature. But again, you can see melt here. And I don't like to see my fibers, but um, that's, that's what I work with. Okay, so Olympia, I did a little experiment. I used a black background box, um, um, high gloss paint. In the microscope, I realized I don't like it because it's too much chatter. I prefer a flat background. I'm looking for different backgrounds that work, and I, and I did not like this. Here I turned the microscope light off, okay? Here it's on, but then I did a little color enhancement with microscope on my computer, and I decided maybe add a little bit of blue for like Photoshop. But actually, I don't like to change my, my actual photography, but you know, you can do cropping. Um, and this is very interesting because my Samsung 7 at the time the camera magnified times three, my microscope was set up at 20 power. These crystals are tiny, very tiny. They really require magnification. Okay, so now I use my Samsung 7, again, magnified three times, microscopes at 25%. When you first look into the microscope, you see a round arc, okay? And I, I like to you know, go in and get rid of that arc but sometimes, again, this is all artwork. You can crop the way you like, you know, decide what you like. But I just, I love this thin little snow crystal. And I actually prefer this, a little artistic art, because I know I'm looking through a microscope. Again, here's Olympia. Um, I think that was the same snowflake. Um, but in my camera, guess what? Look at this, a little specks of dirt in my camera. And I couldn't, I couldn't get rid of it, so I had to get a new camera. Just another little power shot. But again, you know, lovely snow crystal and then three-dimensional. That's why you have a little bit of out of focus on the others. All right, so, okay, Olympia, okay. This is toward the end of Olympia. I actually had eight, eight um, slides in here of Olympia because I got quite a different variety. Um, this would have been nice had it not been broken. And here, lovely hexagonal with plates, rhyme. And um, it's just, I'm getting melt. 
And um, I'm, I'm seeing green in this um, melt. And again, watching a snowflake melt under the microscope is really fun. But I got the color green because that time I was wearing like a green ski jacket. So I learned my lesson, don't move in too close to, to start shadowing a different color. I don't want that. Okay, so November 2018, by the way, I learned that Mother Nature dictates my schedule because maybe the snowfall before this one, maybe 2017, I have nothing on record from 2017 because that probably was the one where I took my time to get ready. And by the time I was ready, the snow stopped. So I, have not, I had no record. So I learned my lesson the wrong way. So 7.30 in the morning, 34 degrees, I'm trying to capture anything. And this is pretty much what I get, just all clusters, all right? But this is what I like. I like my capped columns. And um, here's another capped column. So this is the microscope light off and on, okay? And you can kind of play with that. Sometimes the light on gives you too much um, brightness and a kind of too much reflection. So it's hard, hard to um, capture, you know, a, a, a glowing snowflake with too much reflection. Um, okay, so this is the same 2018 November, 34 degrees. See, I don't get the cold snap. I'm at 20 power magnification. These things are so small, but look at how they're all the little hexagonal plates in a hopper manual. Man, um, manner with little extensions, like legs of a table, a six-sided table with legs. But again, this is all what's kind of crashing uh, down to my plates for me to photograph. And here's another little column, just some chatter, a little needle. There really wasn't much for that particular snowfall. They're just so incredibly tiny that it was just really hard to photograph. I took a lot of pictures, but I couldn't, I couldn't find anything that I really enjoyed. And then of course I'm getting these curious spheres and they're frozen and I'm like, what's going on? Oh, 36 degrees, do you notice that? I think you know the answer, hail. Hail is destroying my project. So again, melt becomes my subject and it's kind of fun. And again, I mean, look at that. I mean, there's just real um, interesting forms in inside these little um, pieces of hail, even though I, I, I don't get, I want my snow crystals. Okay, so January uh, 2019, um, it was an interesting, photography experiment because things were just kind of very delicate. Um, 34 degrees, that explains, you know, kind of we're getting melt, melt. Um, and, and again, this is how my, my um, stages fill up. And I try to capture, I try to look for anything that's snow crystal, little arm here. Check this out. This is really artistic, but it's a snow crystal that I found within um, the snow crystals above. Oh, so this was a two day snowfall, okay? And again, I learned my lesson. Get out there ASAP, stay with it, okay? Even though it was not very exciting, this was day one of day two. Um, okay, lovely dendritic, you know, very clear. It made it, you know, down to my microscope without picking up too much chatter. And look, 1030 at night. Okay, so I didn't get really very good results because the temperature, the temperature now is 32. This is exactly what I want. I want it to go below 32, actually. I'm at 15 power, day one of day two. 1030 at night this is exactly what I want to see. But I want to capture, you know, single little crystals, okay? Here's a nice one there. Um, but I'm just too tired. 10.30, I'm done. I was out there all day. So the next morning, uh, 7.30 in the morning, 32 degrees, the snow changed. It's now falling in clumps, okay? 
So here I am set up. Um, I like to work with my, my stages about this full so I can try to find, you know, the appropriate uh, snow crystals rather than all filled up because then I just get, it's just hard to find individual crystals. So now, like I said, the snow is falling in clumps. It's, it's lovely, it's quiet, but guess what? It changed overnight. It changed to needles. Here's a lovely hexagonal plate filled with rhyme, right? But it changed to needles. The entire rest of the day, um, 34, okay, the temperature is going up, it's needles. And let me tell you something about needles. This is the snowfall that you can hear. It's like glasses clinking, you know, toward each other. So, but as far as finding snowflakes, I'm not going to, because like I say, every snowfall kind of has its own signature. So these, these little needles formed high altitude, low humidity and made it down to my microscope in needle form. And of course, picking up, you know, rhyme or, or grapple. I found a little hexagonal plate here, but for the most part, um, I'm not interested in this kind of stuff. And I did find a lovely snowflake here, but again, hard, hard to photograph. And then here's a hexagonal plate, little plate, but you know, nothing really exciting because it's just clumps, all clumped together. Humidity is going up. Uh, I'm getting melt, um, hexagonal plate. Okay, I think scientifically this is my favorite snow crystal because it's a hexagonal plate on top of another one that's slightly turned. In the mineral world, we would consider that perhaps twinning and 35 degrees temperature. The temperature is rising, so at some point I just say that's enough. Okay, so I have my little rose. You know, I'm just having fun. Here's my little rose with the petals and the stem. And then um, here I found a little plate basically with like three water bubbles. I don't know what's going on there, but it's just interesting. Of course, it's all frozen. Um, okay, so yep, 36 degrees, the snow stopped. Look at this little cross that I found. Again, you know, that was amongst all those needles. Here's the icicles on the roof. We got pretty good snowfall, uh, two days worth of snow. And this is what we got. It was beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Now, the polar vortex, which was February, 2019, I was not home. Um, I missed that, but I was on an airplane from Orlando to DC. And um, these are not the entire size of the window. This is just an oval shape. Every airplane window, has like a little hole down here between the two windows and in between there collected some moisture. The moisture was only in the bottom of the actual window. But me, you know, I have to get up close. I'm looking for like that 60 degree angle, anything Jack Frost, you know. Um, and at, at high altitude, 30,000 feet, you're looking at negative 40 degrees. So this is what happened in the airplane window. And you actually can see something like that anytime you fly because the aircraft are flying so high. And, you know, on a rainy day, I can see the sun shine. What job am I? Flight crew, flight attendant. So let's see, 2019, I'm almost done. Um, again, this snowfall, the signature were needles and rhyme, a very noisy event. And here I used a blue fabric. You can see the woven, I'm, you know, trying to find some different kind of, this might work, blue fabric might work for me um, along with felt. Like I said, needles and rhyme, pretty much 10 o'clock, seven power magnification. Um, Cause when I go higher magnification, then it, you know the, the field of view for you gets blurred, but it's more needles with rhyme, the little frozen droplets of water. And I guess what? Spiky hail is coming in, you know? But this hail is kind of interesting because it's, it's very spiky, it's very frozen. 32 degrees Fahrenheit, seven power. And, you know, 
for that, let's see, January 20th. I guess this would be my favorite shot for the day because you know I found somewhat of a dendrite, uh, lovely snow crystal. Here's a little column. Check out this one here, how delicate it is. You know, it's it's a wonder that it even made it with considering everything that it, you know, floats down to my microscope with. So this is my favorite all time. Check this out. So 32 degrees, 20 power magnification. It's very tiny. Capped column, but look at the lovely dendritic snowflake. And you can even see the hexagonal. There's nothing on this end. This other snowflake was independent because I kind of studied it and there's nothing on the end, but I wonder if it would have matched, you know, that's all my question. I'm very curious of the nature world. But this particular snowfall were pretty much hexagonal columns and um, um, other, that's probably a plate attached. But they, th this is what I was catching, you know, columns with rhyme, maybe a little snow crystal. But I tell you what, this, this was my most fun snowfall because of all the, um, um, hexagonal columns. See what I mean? And okay, it's my blue fabric here. Lovely, lovely. Look at that. Have you ever seen, you know, two snowflakes on the end of a hollow tube? You know, that's your hexagonal columns with lovely hexagonal snowflake. And this one, I must have turned the light off, the fact that it's kind of black and white, again, tr trying to experiment, trying to see the crystal better rather than get too much reflection. Okay, so we have not gotten anything this year, have we? Well, one morning I woke up and there was like, um, on our barbecue grill cover, little snow crystals. So again, I just had to document it even though there was no snowfall uh, predicted. But again, I just, you know, try to, take a close look. And actually I used my Samsung 7 uh, cell, Samsung 9 cell phone. I have a free app that's called magnifying glass uh, with a light, but I turn the light off. So I um, took a picture with my cell phone with the magnifying glass. So I don't know if it was magnified 10 power or what, but again, I'm just emphasizing, look how tiny these snow crystals are. And then on the railing, brown wood in the background, you know, I just thought these are really pretty, but how tiny they are. And that was like eight o'clock in the morning. And um, of course, by nine o'clock, they're completely melted. Now, someone you need to um, look into if you're concerned, if you enjoy snowflakes, pioneering photographer of snowflakes, that'd be Wilton Bentley from the um, Jericho, Vermont. So Wilton, Wilson, Snowflake Bentley, Jericho, Vermont, 1865 to 1931. He was a pioneer in photomicrography of very small objects, snowflakes. So 500 of his snowflake photos now reside at the Smithsonian Institution archives um, offered by Bentley in 1903 to protect against all possible possibility of loss and destruction through fire or accident. So he was taught by his mother, homeschooled, lived and worked on his family farm located in the snow belt where the annual snowfall was about 120 inches a year versus Virginia. In 1985, equipped with both his microscope and a camera, kind of a bellows setup, Bentley made his first successful photograph of a snowflake. So this is just beautiful archival material. And I, and I recommend, you know, you teach your children or go in yourself, snowflakebentley.com. And so 1922, he was featured in Popular Mechanics. And again, he has some of the, some of the little same diagrams that um, Ken Lebrecht was um, putting together in that chart that I could kind of show you. So this is the end of my Snow Crystal Adventures by Kathy Horechka. This is our home. Um, 
the snow stopped. It wasn't much of a snowfall, but I will say my husband's car is covered in snow. So here's a happy smile that he uh, now could shovel it. That was great, Kathy. How amazing. It was like amazing, the amazing journey to a different different world. From Alexandria, <laughs> Virginia. <laughs> but always in Virginia. Well, let's take a look at some of you have quite a few um, some questions here. Um, let's see. Do, 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 do. Uh, Glenn was interested to know how long does it take for a snowflake to form? You know, that, that I can't answer because that's mother nature. That's at high altitude. And we're, we're lucky to be able to um, receive it and document it by all the trajectory and, and up and down and floating around through the clouds and everything and finally come into earth. So I, I, I don't have that answer. And um, Elena was interested, could you, could you tell her again how you built those stages with the the different, different um, layers. Yes, okay. Well, I, I knew I needed something that wasn't gonna stick to the snow and, and you know, so I, I cut a five inch piece of tag board or cardboard. I slipped it in a sandwich bag, plastic. So it's plastic underneath. And then I stapled each corner, a piece of felt on that sandwich bag that has that piece of cardboard in. I knew I needed to make a stage, you know, I, I wanted felt but I knew that I had to stabilize it, but also put it in an area where I could slide it in the snow. And that's where the sandwich bag came in. It's just something I developed. Um, let's see, do you ever use toothpicks or other tools to separate your clumps? Um, I have not tried that because I'm working at 32 degrees and above. And these are so tiny and delicate. I mean, I could try it, but the toothpick's going to sometimes be bigger than the snowflake. You know, that's the problem. There's something I wanted to mention. I bought a new camera, um, a Tough G, Olympus Tough G. It's, it's, it's a heavy, it's a, a very basic camera, but it comes with a microscope setting which means I can photograph something very, very close, like a speck of dust or something. People use it for like bugs, insects. And the microscope setting gives me a eight burr shots, eight, eight pictures in a row very quickly. And the next time it snows, I wanna to try to use that camera without my microscope and see if I could get, you know, close up eight kind of stacking where I might get a little bit three-dimensional view of a snow crystal. And I could like zoom in or crop a single crystal. But again, these are so tiny that magnification is required. Even if you use a cell phone, you're gonna have to enlarge, you know, your magnification and hold it really, really steady to try to capture snowflakes. It's fun. <laughs> um. I've, so have you, you've only done your snowflakes in Virginia. You haven't photographed any in other parts of the country. You know, I'm willing to put my microscope on my airplane because I'm a flight ret retired flight attendant and go back home to Minneapolis in the winter. I can brave that cold, cold winter. But yeah, I'm going to have to take it on the road to go photograph north. Or, what, is, what is the shape of, of, of snowflake that you haven't gotten that you really, really want to see? Um, well, I, 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 the lovely, perfect, pristine see-through dendrites like Wilton Bentley has, okay? So that, that's, that's what I would love to see. And I know that I'm going to have to go to the north. I know I'm going to have to go to Minneapolis or my cousin in Colorado, where you have low humidity on the ground. Because high humidity, Maryland, Virginia, I mean, it just, it, there's just no hope for perfect crystals. But it's all science. It's all natural world. It's wonderful. Let's see. Oh, 
Doug is, has a very specific question. Have you considered an SLR with a macro lens mounted on the microscope? Um, I, when I first bought my microscope, they asked me, do you wanna buy a trinocular? And I said, oh, I'll never, I'll, I'll never use that. I'll never need to photograph. I don't wanna mount a camera on my um, microscope right now, the, the optics, because it would bend. It's too much weight. If, if you wanna photograph with a microscope, you have to have the trinocular where you're photographing straight down. So I'm not gonna, I, I'm not able to attach a heavy kind of camera, that's where I work with lightweight equipment. And if you, um, for, for folks who just wanna get out there and, and try it, um, any, any, any words of wisdom? Sure, take your cell phone, just simply magnify, or like I say, the free, there's a little free app called Magnifier, well, Magnifier Flashlight. I just turn the flashlight off and I use the magnifier and you just have to hold it really still. So yeah, cell phones are really amazing for trying to photograph snow crystals. I think it's inc incredible that you can get such detail with just a, a regular cell phone in our hand. Sure. Uh, how long does it take you to, to, to look through each of the, the, I can't remember, the hoppers that you, that, that uh, when you're looking for a, yeah, well, that's the thing. You you've really got to search, you know, through all the snow. Um, I spend a lot of time searching, and then try to photograph. So much of the time is searching on my little plates, and like I said, each snowfall has its own signature. So those hoppers are basically kind of within one snowfall. Um, yeah. Remember, like I said, the needles are all in one consistent snowfall. The hoppers were presenting themselves in one particular snowfall. So you don't get the whole gambit in one snowfall, no. It's, it's a certain, certain range based on the uh, lack of humidity where they were formed or humidity at altitude and then be able to survive you know, floating through the air. And you wouldn't know how many how many snowflakes that are formed at high altitude don't make it. Correct, exactly. And 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 of course, when you find when you when the snowfall is nice and quiet, it's because you've got all those clumps. You know, all those snowflakes have kind of crashed together and are melting, and um, it just quiets the atmosphere. Versus those little needles, those little needles, you will hear that snowfall. It's like crashing China. <laughs> Any qu other questions for y'all? Any any other questions for our audience? Raise your hand. Come online. Unmute. So okay. So how about if I challenge? Okay, next time it snows, because I know Maryland or Pennsylvania is going to have better result than than where I am, because I'm close to the Potomac River. Okay, um, but I challenge you if you can have any, you know, take any successful pictures, you know, send them into the Nature Center, send them into Bronwyn, and maybe you can post them somewhere online. We would, we would love to post those online. I, I, I accept that challenge. I don't like snow, but I think they, that was so fascinating to see them in a different way, um, rather than just wet them. <laughs> um, uh, Becca says, have you tried a GoPro on a time-lapse setting? Hey, my husband has a, a GoPro. I could try that. I will thank you for the idea. I'm always open to suggestion without spending any more money. So yeah, I could try that. Thank you. And everybody is, is chiming in that your pictures were absolutely amazing and beautiful. Thank you. They were works of art. Th that's exactly how I see it, works of art. And I tell you, I only show you just some of the nice ones, but the majority of the pictures, there's really not much there. You know, you 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 would say, oh, okay, it's uh, I don't see it. But I thank you for appreciating what I what I did catch. You know, even though none of them were perfect, but they were they were interesting. They were perfect in their imperfections. So, like we all are. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, if there are no more questions, I want to, on behalf of the Natural History Society of Maryland, thank you, Kathy, for coming and sharing your, your time, your passion, and um, your photographs with us. Um, I look around, everybody looks a little bit smarter, so well, that's a good thing. And now we can go out and take the knowledge that you've given us and the challenge to, to look at snow in a different way and capture it um, on, uh, on, in, uh, in, in photography. So I think that's wonderful. Thank you so much. And thank you everybody for joining us this evening. Um, I hope to see you back for another wonderful presentation on, uh, on, on different topics that are related to natural history. So we can keep our curiosity muscles in shape and growing strong. Um, and if y'all have a chance, donate to the Natural History Society of Maryland, become members and caretakers of our natural history of this wonderful state and help us um, to continue our education and engagement activities. So thank you very much. Everybody stay safe. Um, and, and now we can't wait for snow to come. I can't believe I said that. <laughs> thank you, bye. Thanks, Gavin. Thank you, Bronwyn. I, cha I challenge you, Bronwyn, to photograph a snowflake and, and text it to me. <laughs> I, 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 I accept your challenge. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Kathy, Kathy, it was good seeing you again. Oh, great. Hi. Thank yeah. you so much. It was fascinating.